Hey everyone. Today we're investigating generating some procedural biomes for our worlds. Specifically, what we want to do is we want to take our little planets that have some noise height applied and all of that stuff, and we want to divide the world up into somewhat plausible regions with different climates. In other words, we want to make them look like actual living, thriving planets. And what we got right now isn't much. A sad, rocky little world with some random textures applied. This really doesn't look like anything at all. Just a big space rock. We'll start by looking at Earth, since it's really the only reference we have, and specifically the different biomes that are present on this planet. Biomes being the kind of distinct regional climates that we're all familiar with. The Arctic, rainforest, desert, tundra. These are all examples of the varied biomes that we have on this planet. And although there are different ways that these are typically classified, there's one in particular, Whitakers, that we'll take a much closer look at. The nice thing about this classification is, as Wikipedia mentions, he kind of boiled all the biomes down to two factors, precipitation and temperature. It's not perfect, but you can see that most of the major climates are represented by this simple graph, and that reduces the complexity really nicely. So the plan is, at least roughly, in order to get biomes into our world, we'll define a couple of things. We'll define temperature values across the planet somehow, likely just as a function of proximity to the equator. And then we'll define moisture or precipitation values across the planet, probably just completely randomly. We need to make this change in a couple areas. First off, in the worker that builds the mesh, we'll call out with a new function called get temperature which we'll go implement now. So in Texture Splatter, we'll add this get temperature function and we'll do something insanely simple. Just use the absolute value of the normal at this position as the temperature. And here we go. Here's the planet with the temperature showing in all its glory. Notice the fall off from the equator towards the poles. So we've got the temperature varying from hottest to coldest there. And we can break this up with a bit of noise, since this is pretty homogeneous and kind of boring. In the code, what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of noise onto the calculation by sampling a second noise function. This works out pretty well. The noise was pretty basic before, and this kind of breaks things up a bit, hopefully looking a little bit more visually appealing later. There's still some problems though. If we zoom in a bit, there's some obvious peaks and mountains that realistically should see some fall off in temperature. When you look at a picture of real mountains, it might be sunny and warm at sea level, but it's not exactly a tropical paradise at the top. Temperature tends to fall off pretty quickly with height, so we need to do the same thing. So we'll introduce a kind of fudge factor to the temperature where we'll drop it off depending on the height above sea level. It's not super scientific, I kind of had to play with the values to get this to look decent. That looks a bit better. We've got some pretty obvious height fall off for temperatures now, which at least seems right intuitively. Nothing here is based on real actual science. I want to visualize this a bit better, so maybe to improve the look to see the temperatures a bit better, we'll take some inspiration from what is very arguably the greatest movie of all time, or at least among the best. And so what I'm doing is defining some colors from red to yellow to blue to black, and that'll give us hopefully a better visualization of the world. This looks pretty cool. I've kind of jacked up the height of things, so you can see that the peaks of mountains are cold. And now I'd say we're kind of done with temperature, at least for now. So let's move on to precipitation or moisture levels. This is going to be pretty basic. Whereas temperature varied quite a bit with different factors, moisture is just going to be a straight up noise sampling with some height attenuation. And that's pretty much it. There's our precipitation map on the world. So what will happen is that the areas with lots of precipitation will be lush jungles and stuff, while we should get deserts and that kind of thing in dry, arid areas. So with precipitation and temperature, we can pretty much do whatever we want at this point. What I'll do is I'll go into the shader, and from here we can do a simplistic copy of that Whitaker biome chart. I'll define colors for high precipitation areas and then for low precipitation areas and use moisture to blend between those. What you end up with is kind of neat. You've got an entire world at this point, but more importantly, as I zoom around, down by the equator here, for example, I've got lush jungle zones and desert zones. It looks pretty plausible. Now as I pan up north, I get more temperate climates, and eventually as I get to the North Pole, it goes pretty barren and snowy. So this is kind of working. 
we can tweak the code a bit to add an ocean and mountains as well, or at least some sort of coloring from space. We'll circle back at some point and make a legit ocean shader, but for now, we've got blue. It looks pretty decent when you're far out. I'm happy. It's not the best, but what we're really just going for is zones, and so this is kind of good enough. Back in the code, we can continue tweaking and improving the look a bit. What I'm doing here is I'm adding a quick and dirty Fong lighting calculation, since up until now we've just been looking at this unlit. That gets us a bit further, looking slightly worldly. Realistically, we kind of finished what we set out to do here, which was build some sort of way of differentiating climates and biomes in our procedural world, but I'm going to run with this a bit more. First thing I'm going to do is reincorporate that triplanar mapping that we introduced a few tutorials back. If you recall in that tutorial, we explored triplanar mapping and tiling repetition, and we're just shoving that code back in. But I'm only enabling it for the normal maps. I'm also adding a bit of extremely low frequency noise to the normal map, which will show up when we're far from the ground. And I dumped in some warped noise to the ocean, and I also changed the lighting model to a quickie, physically based lighting model. This is the final result of kind of fiddling a bit with the shader. This was just for fun. I mean, we already did the biomes. But you can kind of see that with just a few little additions to the shader here and there, we can go pretty far. And honestly, this is just the start. Researching this, there's so much more that you can do if you want to have a hyper-realistic world. You can go with actual simulations of tectonic plate movement to figure out mountain ranges. You can use proximity to oceans and mountains to figure out rain patterns better. Do simulations of currents, blah 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 blah, the list goes on. We're really just breaking the ice here on what's possible. Personally, I'll stop here unless I have a compelling reason to go with way more advanced stuff. This gives pretty good results already. So, until next time. Cheers.